First week at home with my new Dorian puppy has been just a ton of work, but Arlo has made some amazing progress in just one short week. So let's jump into all the mishaps and the successes the first week with my new Dorian puppy. Arlo. Arlo's had a lot of wins so far this week, which is really awesome. Um, after only one week, he's sleeping through the whole night, which is just crazy fast. Um, I think there's a lot of reasons for this. I think uh, we had the right uh, crate set up. We had the, the partition in the crate. We had it uh, feeling like a den with most of the sides covered. He could see us while he's sleeping. Um, there's a few things that I think we did really, really right as far as that goes. Um, the bedding is really, really soft and plush. Um, the first night, of course, wasn't like that. The first night, three or four times, he woke up crying take him out to go to the bathroom and then bring him back in. Um, the second night, I think about two times we went out. Third night was about one time. Uh, and then, and then another night or two of only taking him out once. And now last night, about one week in, he went the whole night. He didn't cry at all. There's more to it though, than just his crate. Um, I know that we, uh, got him set up pretty good in the evenings for it as far as, um, kind of near the end making sure he was fed a little bit earlier so that he'd have time to go out and, uh, and go to the bathroom before we actually went up for bed. Um, so there's a few things we started to do kind of before bedtime that would help uh, make it more likely for him to get through the night. Um, also tricks, he's starting to get some tricks down already. Um, I've been using trick training as a way to calm him down when he's really bouncing off the walls uh, or before meal times. Um, he's been doing really great with sit, He's been doing really great with shake. Down he can do. Um, there's one or two he's a little more shaky on, but those three he seems to have the best. Uh, so that's really, really fast progression for, I mean, now a nine week old uh, Doberman puppy. Oh, and he's also starting to get the hang of the release word, uh, which we use as okay. So a lot of times we make him wait before his meal, for example, and then give him the okay uh, release command and then he can eat it or uh, when we have him wait before entering the house, we give him the okay command and he'll um, come running in. So he's starting to get the hang of the release command, but the, uh, the sit, the shake, and the down, he's, he's really got pretty well. The other thing Arlo has down really well after only one week is allowing us to go through the door first before he comes in the house. Now I make sure all the human family members uh, come through the door. I make Arlo stay kind of at the threshold, right, stop. make him wait stop. a second, and then I give him the OK command, which is okay. the release command that we've chosen for him. Good and boy. he comes flying through the door. Uh, he is really getting that down well. That's going to help a lot with uh, preventing some of the alpha dog issues down the road um, and just making it so that he uh, respects kind of the pecking order in the pack, so to speak. So overall, I'm just super excited at the blazing, like, blazing fast uh, speed in which Arlo's picked up a couple of these things at only nine weeks old. I mean, I am just incredibly impressed. I think a lot of that, well, probably most of that has to do with the operator. My first Doberman, I didn't know half, quarter or even less uh, compared to what I know now working with Dobermans. Now that I've helped others with their Dobermans, I've done consultations to help train others and train their dogs. Um, those things have prepared me so much and just, just the ridiculous amount of research I've done since owning my first Doberman so now 
it's just, it's, it's now that I've learned more what I'm doing and I'm way more direct about it and I have a plan planned out. Um, it's just giving me results, just hands over fist. It's, it's crazy how fast he's learning. Now at only nine weeks old, of course, Arlo still has things that he's, he's still working on and struggling through, of course, and that's totally to be expected. Uh, the first one is potty training. And I think, well, I mean, we're only a week into potty training. He's on a uh, potty training schedule, which is basically where you take him out at key points during the day. You take him out, you know, after I think uh, eating or drinking right away within a few minutes of, of any playful exercise, um, strenuous exercise. Uh, just after waking up from a nap or from sleeping overnight. Um, these key points, you take them out throughout the day and you keep them on the schedule. You keep in a pretty consistent routine uh, and it gets them to get used to potting outdoors where they're supposed to go. And that's been working really well for him. In fact, it was working so well that I kind of fell into a little trap that some people might fall into where, um, and I've seen it many times before with other owners, where you start to back off of the schedule and rely on the dog to tell you a little too early, which is what we kind of started to do. And then he had a couple accidents in the house. Good totally boy. our fault. Um, we should have kept going with that schedule. Good boy. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna dial it back a little bit and rely a little more heavily on the schedule for a little bit longer uh, until uh, we feel confident enough that we can start trying to get off the schedule a little bit and rely on him to tell us. Now, another area he's struggling with, and again, at nine weeks old, it's really to be expected, is learning to play with my son, who's toddler age, uh, in kind of a calm way. And, um, you know, he jumps a little bit too much on him. He might want to pounce and play on him or nibble on him, and that's not good at all, or scratch, on, scratch him, which is not good, um, or paw at him. Uh, these are things you really got to watch for. If you have really young kids with a puppy like this, you got to have it fully supervised all the time for quite a while until the dog can slowly be more and more trusted. Um, with Arlo here, he's showing some really great signs though. Um, he's having his moments where he calms down a lot with my son and they kind of just walk around together and they have really peaceful play. Um, again, always with me right there to, to intervene if I need to. The thing that you don't want to do is you don't want to have an incident where the young pup, you know, jumps and is wanting to play and, and nips the kid or causes an injury of some sort. And now the kid is terrified of the dog. And now the kid doesn't want the dog anywhere around. Um, <clears throat> anytime the kid's playing, he doesn't want the dog. So you automatically start separating the two of them. You don't want to start down that route. So the best way is to make sure they're fully supervised and that no injuries occur. But like I said, I see some great signs in Arlo. Um, I know I'll be able to trust him in uh, not too long in, in the scheme of things. Uh, so he's going to be good, but at the moment, at only nine weeks old, I got to be all over him with the kids just to make sure it all goes smooth. All right, and the third thing that Arlo's struggling with, which I think is totally normal, especially at his age, just like the other ones, is uh, he's biting and chewing on things that he really shouldn't be. And at his age, at nine weeks old, I mean, that's, that's how these dogs feel. They don't have hands like you and I do. They feel and they get to know their surroundings by chewing on them, by seeing how it feels in their teeth, by investigating the area, uh, by feel with their mouth. So totally normal. I'm not worried about it. But in the meantime, of course, I don't want him chewing on the couch. I don't want him chewing on the kids' toys. Um, I don't want him chewing on our hands. Those are things that we have to be on top of. And I think we're doing a really good job at it. He's um, just doing really what, what's to be expected of him. This is a whole new home for him. He doesn't know, he's just used to his litter mates and um, being at, at his breeder's house. And this is a whole new house for him, a whole new home. So it's totally normal. He's gonna go around checking out things with his mouth. That being said, you can't necessarily let it slide all the time either. You gotta be on top of that. Otherwise it could develop into uh, a longer term habit. And now I know that mouthing and, and chewing on and teething stuff is going to get better with age, especially when it gets past the teething stage. Um, but in the meantime, we do have tons and tons of toys for him. We have toys of all different textures and types, hard rubber toys, uh, nylabone type things, balls of different types, rope toys, stuffed toys, all different textures for him to feel. Even a lot of things that really you're not supposed to leave the dog alone with. Um, which we don't if you know any kind of toys that could become dangerous when they get chewed apart We make sure are always fully supervised But you always want a toy within like arm's reach so you can redirect the dog, you know from your couch to his bone um, That is the a, a great way to handle some of that teething. That's one of the many ways you can do it um, Also when he's doing a lot of this, it's just because he's he's got extra energy and extra uh, pent-up um, frustration and he's trying to work that out so 
Um, if that starts happening, sometimes I bust out the training treats and I just start training him. We start working on sit, we start working on uh, down or, or shake or any other many different commands um, that I'm trying to teach him. And that really helps him work it out. And it's amazing guys, you don't just have to run these dogs around and get them super exhausted to tire them out and make them, you know, like this. Um, you really just need to also engage their mind. If you engage their mind, you're like, wow, you know, this dog's not doing much. He's just coming up to me. I'm getting him to sit on occasion with a treat and then feeding him the treat. And then we kind of repeat that. And all he's doing is really sitting back and forth a whole lot. I doubt that I'm working out any energy. Trust me, you are. You're working out that mental energy. And that is huge for these dogs. And that'll help a lot of his biting problems and just a lot of his rough housing with the kids issues. It'll work out just a lot of his extra energy. And uh, you'll have a real, a real docile dog if he's uh, mentally uh, stimulated as well as physically. And the other thing we're focusing really hard on with Arlo here is just having really good quality family time. And uh, this happens mainly in the evenings when everybody's home for the day and you know we're sitting around in the living room and I really focus on uh, making sure that family time goes smoothly, that he's not too rough with the, with the kids um, and that there's a lot of good positive interactions. I, and when he starts to get sleepy and starts to tire out like this, um, I'll use that as an opportunity to move him over to a small pen we have right near the living room. It's a great, it's got a bed in there. Uh, it's got toy, uh, one or two toys that he really likes, one of, some of his favorites. So he can sleep kind of near where the family is in the living room, still be contained in case he randomly wakes up when we're not paying attention. Uh, but, um, and, it's, and it's just the right size where it discourages, uh, uh, you know, accidents. And the good thing about moving him over when he's really sleepy is he starts to learn that's a safe place for him. And that's a place where he can go and relax. Uh, and so you never want to put him in a pen like that as a punishment. And that's really hard to do because if he starts like um, teething too much or biting on things or not listening to you or whatever, and you're like, oh, I just can't deal with him right now. I'm going to, you know, correct him and then throw him in that pen so I don't have to deal with it for a little while and get a break. You can't do that. You got to resist that urge. And it's so hard to resist that urge. You got to just work through it with him until you start to get maybe five minutes of positive play together where you're not correcting him. Everything's going smooth. And then maybe even 10 minutes. And then you can be like, okay, good. Now I can put him in his pen and hope that he can relax a little bit. So he never equates his pen with any kind of punishment. So that's a lot of things that we're doing in the evenings to make it go smooth, you know, working them out, getting them tired, positive interactions, putting him in that pen next to the family so he can sleep because he's still a young puppy, sleeps a lot of the time, many hours a day. And we put him in that young, that, that pen when he's already real tired with his favorite toys after some positive interactions, he'll start to equate that little pen with positive relaxed times. And then you can get a break uh, a little bit from your dog to go do whatever else you need to do around the house. Guys, there's a few things we've been doing this week that we've been working really hard on, which should help to prevent some of the unwanted behaviors down the road. And uh, some of these are things like playing with his face, his nose, his lips, his, uh, his uh, paws and his toenails, just kind of playing with those things while he's relaxing. I've talked about this many times on my channel before. I can't tell you guys how big of an impact this has made, not just for me, but other people I've worked with with their Dormans. And it, it, it really, if you do this at a young age and all the way through as they grow up, um, you're going to have a dog that you or a young kid or a toddler or anybody could pretty much do anything to and they're going to be pretty relaxed with. Also, at meal times, we've been doing another trick that I mentioned before, which is uh, putting our hands in his bowl while he's eating. Since statistically most dog bites happen around food and them being protective of their food, um, we're getting our dog used to from a very young age um, getting his food and having um, one of us put our hands, you know, we're the adults, not the kids, of course, put our hands in the bowl and kind of uh, obstruct his eating just for a few seconds and then release and let him go back to it. We're getting him used to that. We're going to do that pretty consistently as he's growing up a lot in the beginning, probably almost every meal in the beginning. And then as he gets older, we'll just do it every now and then down to maybe once a week as, as an adult. But if you keep doing that, that's going to keep his protective instincts around his food um, a lot uh, more subdued. And it'll also help solidify you as the alpha in the house. Now, another thing we're doing to help solidify us as the alpha is we are making sure that he does not go through any doors in front of us. And again, we're starting this right now, guys. You start it early at nine weeks old. Dobermans can be very dominant. So you got to jump on this stuff early. So what we're doing, this happens all the time when I bring him out to go pee. 
Uh, we go to the bathroom outside on the way back. Um, we go to go through the door to go back in the house. I stop him. I put my hand up in front of his, his nose and I say, stay. And um, I hold him there while any adults who are outside all come through. Sometimes my kid comes out with me. Sometimes my wife. We make sure everybody's inside except for the dog. And then I put my hand down and I say, okay. And he comes bounding in. We've been doing that from the very beginning as well. And actually he's getting really good at it. Initially we had to keep putting him back and, and making sure he knew what stay meant. But now I could put my hand up, okay. tell him to stay. And this dog at only nine weeks old, will sit there and stay and sometimes just sit and look at me and wait for my release command of okay to come bounding through. So if you keep doing that all the way through, okay. you're gonna have a dog that also respects you as the alpha, kind of knows their place in the pecking order. And uh, it's gonna be a lot easier dog to work with with anything else you do with them. And one other thing we did guys is we did get him in, of course, for his first vet visit. When you get a new dog, it's very important to bring him in to the vet early on just to get an overall physical done. Make sure he's in good health. Uh, he got up to date on his uh, vaccines his dewormer, they just give him a, a look over, give him a fresh, clean bill of health and uh, got him on a uh, puppy care plan as well, which is sort of like a puppy insurance of sorts. So he's all squared away there. Um, you can't forget to bring your dog in pretty early on for uh, his first checkup with the vet. It's just really good practice to do. Well guys, if you've enjoyed seeing Arlo's progress so far and you wanna continue seeing his progress and learning about raising a Doberman puppy from the beginning all the way up to adulthood, then make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and the little bell icon that pops up next to it and uh, you'll see this every step of the way. And I'll definitely do my best to tell you all the tricks I know as we go along. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hit that like button, drop a comment down below and I'll see you next week.